Hey everyone, Molly here from A Drink With Monty. Uh, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, so all of the podcasts we release during the month of May will be based on the topic of mental health awareness. Uh, John and I both find it to be a very important topic, especially in the lives of first responders, military, firefighters, all of that. On this episode, we have Blake Stinnett. He is the founder of Next Rung, which is a peer support organization for first responders. Um, He talks a lot about that organization, how it got started, what they do, um, and he also has a lifestyle company called Open Bail that he speaks about as well. He is a very intelligent person. He's a Metro Atlanta firefighter, and he just has a really great story to tell. Before we dive into John's interview with Blake, we wanted to start this podcast off with a testimonial from nextrung.org. So I was thinking now would be a good time to type this up after seeing how good things have been going with my new crew. I am still a work in progress, but you guys have really helped me get a hold of some serious issues. Just the beginning of my off-season, I was faced with some pretty dark thoughts. I would lash out at people, I couldn't maintain my relationships very well, and I did not want to live. Next Strong has really come through for me. You all got me in touch with some really skilled professionals. For the first time in my life, I was opening up to someone else without any sort of reservations. Not only was this experience a start in a better practice with mental health, but it changed my outlook on life. I've been able to meet people and be completely upfront with them and form relationships. A year ago, I would have never considered the possibility of being able to have a romantic relationship, but recently, I've been open enough to enjoy such a meaningful relationship. I'm now part of an established crew, and I'm really able to connect and trust these crewmates. My career is taking off as a result of caring for my mental health. NextStrong has helped me take ownership of my own mental health and life, and I am forever grateful for what good has come from it. In FIRE, we have a lot of stressors and should be willing to connect and recognize that we all need help sometimes. I was afraid to lose respect from crewmates and afraid that seeking help might make it more difficult to secure a higher position, but I'm moving up now, much faster than I could have imagined. All of this is because I've taken the steps to care for having good mental health. Thank you, Next Rung, for providing me with the right resources to make this life a really successful one. Blake, how are you today, dude? I'm good, man. I'm doing well. It's doing good to well. see you, bro. You too, man. The last time I saw you, we were at a mental health class called This One For Us, hosted by the 575 Fools, and you gave your outstanding class, man. So thank you for that. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. It was a blast. Yeah. yeah we were lucky to have you, and I'm lucky to have you here today. Um, so we're going to start off the way we normally start, man. Just tell us about yourself, you know, your upbringing, how you got in the fire service. I know that you kind of were steering towards a different direction before Mm -hmm. the fire service Mm -hmm. and we'll go from there, my brother. Yeah, man. So, uh, like you said, my name is Blake and, uh, man, just, uh, glad to be here and, and, and thankful for an opportunity just to share a little bit more about, you know, who, who I am and, and the things that I'm involved in. Um, but really, you know, as a whole, Growing up, you know, things like that, uh, I guess my start into the fire service was, man, I, I volunteered for a couple of years. Uh, the, the county that I live in currently is where I grew up the majority of my life, and it was volunteer for the longest time. My dad was a volunteer firefighter, um, and that was all that there was when, when I was younger. And so I remember the point where it became a career, you know, fire service, and they asked my dad to, to be a part of that and join that. But man, uh, the pay wasn't very good. So he had to decline that so he could uh, continue taking care uh, of his family. But he, he volunteered until really he he, uh, he broke his elbow, he broke his knee. So it just kind of, you know, physically it, it took him out of the game. But man, he, he enjoyed it. I remember being in you know, the car going to, to fires, you know, because the gear is in the, in the back of the car. They had their packs. They had everything, man. So, uh, nothing you know, but healthy carcinogens. For exactly. You. you know, and I remember that smell, obviously, you know, of, of worn gear coming out of fires and it was, uh, man, it sticks with you and it was exciting. You know, I remember, like I said, seeing 
my dad would go into fires and then come out and, you know, the, the accomplishment there. And it's just something that, uh, you know, had grown up around, you know, hopping off and on, you know, different rigs around the station, um, you know, being there for different events, things like that. So it's definitely a part of, you know, the, the family and, uh, something that, that I grew up around and, and, and grew to, to have a, a big love for. And, uh, coming out of high school, you know, you're always kind of faced with that, that decision of what do I do next? You know, do I go to college? Do I, you know, jump into a career or what do I do? Um, for me, man, I was kind of torn between the fire service and, uh, for myself personally, going into ministry full time. And, uh, I decided to go into ministry full time. Uh, went to college for that, have an undergrad in psychology, a master's in theological studies. And, uh, man, I did that for eight years full time, but twice during that, there were moments where I just I couldn't help but think about the fire service and, and think about the people who served in it and just the the want to, to be a part of that. So finally, after the second time, I, I decided that, man, if, if I don't do this, I'm going to question myself for, for the rest of my life. And that was back in, in 2015 when I started at Gwinnett County Fire. And that's where I got my start as a career firefighter. I was there for three years. And then back in 2017 or 2018, right at the end there, um, I came to uh, to Sandy Springs Fire where I serve currently. And man, it's uh, it's been a great career. I love I love the fire service, man. Like there's there's nothing better. And you know, so many times we, we see, I guess, the issues and the problems within our own department, and we question the brotherhood but then you look outside of that and you get to to know people like yourself or so many other people that i've gotten to know um that absolutely love this job Mm -hmm. and the desire is there the fire that that burns within them to create change and to be you know one of those people that just passes that on you know and creates that culture man that the culture that uh that so many people create is, is what's contagious. Mm-hmm. Um, and Absolutely. there are some great people in the fire service and, and just great people as a whole that, that we've gotten to know. So that's kind of, you know, how I got into the fire service. Like I said, I volunteered for a couple of years. I learned a little bit there um, and stepped down for a few years before I, I became a, a career fireman and uh, definitely thankful for all those different things. And, and you know, to see both sides of that uh, because a lot of what we deal with with Next Strong is, you know, people from the fire service as a whole. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you know, that's that's career firefighters, it's volunteer firefighters, it's wildland firefighters. Um, and then obviously it goes into EMT paramedics and uh, dispatchers. I mean, there's there's a lot of people that we deal with. So, um, man, it's, uh, it's it's great to to be a part of and like I said, man, the brotherhood that, that we have in the fire services is, is like none other. So uh, I love it, man, and, and couldn't be happier with the, the career that, that, I, that I'm a part of. I can, I can relate, man. There's a, so much going on in the fire service, and it's so easy to get mixed up in all the BS and the paperwork and just everything that goes along with that. And I understand that it's essential and, and it's part of the job, but I agree with you. that It is totally the people in the atmosphere that, that make this job so contagious and just fun to do yeah um all right so next wrong man big deal big time Uh, (laughs) i know you laugh dude but seriously to to think that somebody's taking the reins on something so delicate and run with it like you have is is impressive my friend so tell us tell us how you got started dude and and i mean really what what prompted you to do that yeah man so um i kind of talked about previously before i entered into the fire service the, the desire to want to be a part of something that that serves and gives back to the community was a, a big part of that. But the, the other portion of that, I guess the other greater half was making a difference in the people who are actually serving within that, um, that service. Uh, so the firefighters as a whole, uh, you know, I, I love, I love the firefighters, man. I love the people that I work with and, I know that there are issues that we all face or things that, man, that, that we go through that, you know, no one else would understand other than, you know, someone else who works and is a part of that, you know, because they live that lifestyle. Uh, so in, in 2017, man, um, really what prompted me to make this move is I wanted to give back in, in some way. 
Uh, but that year, man, uh, one of the guys that helped me through rookie school at Gwinnett County, he actually took his life and his name was Sam Garrison. And just a big part of, you know, the reason that I decided to, to, I guess, really come up with an idea, you know, how can we give back? How can we do something to, to give back to the people that, that we serve around that are, that are just like me and just like you and uh, man, that was one of the, the big pushes into that is, man, Sam was, was not someone who was a best friend, but he was someone that I got to know for over a year because he was an adjunct and he came, you know, on his days off and he helped, you know, teach us and show us so many different th- things throughout my, my year there in the, the academy and just a big impact in that way, man. And I remember, man, like he was always smiling. He was always laughing, cutting up and just a, a great person to be around, you know, and, and just someone to listen to. And it just made me realize that you never know what people are going through, man. And it doesn't matter what they look like on the outside yeah, or how they the portray themselves on the outside or, you know, how, how good they are at masking those things. Like, man, everyone's got a story. And I wanted to be able to hear those stories. And, you know, one conversation is kind of the thing that I push a lot. Is it's, If we could just have one conversation with you, I'm not saying it's going to save your life, but if we can have – one conversation, man, the odds are is that we are going to be able to talk about it and we are going to be able to start moving in a positive direction. And and while that road may be, you know, 50 miles or 100 miles or 10 miles, you know, it's different for everyone, you know, but I um, mean, everyone's got a road ahead of them that they have to to, you know, one step in front of the other until they get to where they need to be. So, uh, you know, again, everyone's story is different, but man, I love listening to people. I love talking with people and just hearing about what it is that's going on. So, um, you know, next rung originally, man, we started out with just kind of selling apparel and, and doing things like that, uh, so that we could take a portion of the profits and give it back to an organization that was, doing something like this already. Uh, as we started doing that, I couldn't find an organization that I wanted to or felt comfortable with giving my money back to, you know, and donating a portion of that. And the more and more I thought of it and, and got into it, I was like, man, like maybe, maybe I should do this. You know, maybe this is something that we should take on and, and really try to, you know, I guess, make a difference in and and try to fix I don't know if you can necessarily fix it as a whole because if you fix it then it's not a problem anymore but it's always going to be an issue and uh you know so that's kind of where it started is is man like I couldn't find somewhere to to donate my money back to and and man, I just have the passion of, like I said, man, just just talking with people and, and being a part of, you know, their life, I guess, in some way, form or, or fashion and just trying to, to be there to, to give a little bit of guidance. And I'm not a professional counselor and I'm not, you know, the, the know-it-all or, or the person that has all the answers, but man, really, like you said earlier, when we were talking before this, it, it just takes someone who's, who's willing to listen. And, um, anyway, man, so that's kind of where it started. And, and I brought on our co-director, his name's Charlie Brown. He lives on the West coast in California. Uh, he works for the city of Glendale and, and lives just right above L.A. County. Uh, and so it was kind of like the, the West Coast, East Coast thing. And then we started just to, to fill people in who are part of our, our board of directors. And we have people all over the United States who are serving as a part of our organization and serving as a part of our peer support team and really have the same mentality. And, and you know, the idea of let's just listen to people and, and hear, you know, what it is that they're going through, what's going on in their mind and you know, let's point them in the right direction, whether that's through, you know, peer support. We have three pillars, you know, that, that we talk about is peer support. It's just one-on-one conversation. Then we actually will help people uh, find a, a licensed counselor in their area. So we get their area code and say, um, you know, hey, just send us over a little bit of your information. You know, just give us your full address, but what's your area code so we can find someone that's close to you. And so we'll call and vet those counselors out. And, you know, talk with them, let them know who Next Rung is, what we're looking for. And, you know, the person, the first responder that we have, like these are the issues that they are facing. And here's what we need to help them get through. And so we will walk through and then we'll send, you know, one or two of those over to that person that they can reach out to. And so they have to make that step to say, I I want to be a part of this. And 
Another part of what we do is we provide uh, financial assistance for licensed counseling. So if their insurance won't cover it or, you know, they can't pay for it out of pocket, then we'll help pay for that first cycle of sessions for them so that they have every every reason to say yes and to, to get the help that they need. So, um, you know, along with that, we also will help people, you know, get into uh, a facility if they have some sort of addiction or, you know, whatever it may be, some sort of rehab that is for them so that they can get past you know, that, uh, that pressing factor of this is why I am where I am right now. And, you know, once they can kind of tackle that and break that wall down, you know, continue to help them through that. So we've done that a few times as well. And, uh, then lastly, what we do is we donate back to families that we have heard of, um, who have lost their, their firefighter, their first responder to suicide. So whether that's, you know, a mom and dad that's lost their child or, you know, a husband or wife that's lost their spouse, you know, we send a care package to them that's got a donation check, uh, some shirts from us, you know, a challenge coin, a letter explaining who we are and that we're here for them. Uh, you know, one of the things that, that we see as a whole in, in this service, in this career that we are part of is, it's not always just the the firefighter or the first responder that's impacted, but it's the family as well. It's the spouse. It's the children. Uh, man, th- there's so many issues that can develop from us not taking care of ourselves, and then it just pours over onto our family. So we want to take care of the family as well. So, you know, if a wife ever, you know, reaches out and says, hey, I need some counseling, like my husband and I are going through some some things, and we just need to work this out, then we'll pay for the husband and the wife to get counseling. Or if it's, you know, affecting the whole family, we want to, we want to pay for the whole family. Uh, but nonetheless, man, we, we just really want to be here to create change and make a difference. And, you know, I think as anyone would, would hope to just leave the the fire service better than what we found it. And then, you know, first responders as a whole, you know, we, we eventually opened up to that. So if I, I reference fire, the fire service a lot, that's because that's what I'm a part of. And that's what I'm, I'm most passionate about. Um but, you know, everyone that serves with us is a full-time firefighter and either EMT or paramedic. So, you know, these are people who are on, you know, rigs every, you know, every third day or whatever their their rotation is. And they understand the job. They're a part of it. And they live it just like you and I do. That's something I think that's so important. <clears throat> um, and nothing against the chaplain services that departments offer or the outlets that the departments offer. Um but it's so much easier to talk to somebody that, like you said, has walked a mile in our shoes, that knows the lingo, that knows our dark humor. Mm-hmm. Um, so although the, the chaplain services, they're, they're vital and they're something that we have to have and, and should utilize, I think that next rung is a great first step because, again, we are talking to somebody that knows what we're going through. Mm-hmm. Um, something else big is, uh, you know, Georgia pa- paints this picture that, setting up a peer support or a mental health organization is very hard. There's so much red tape and you can be held liable for certain things that I, for us as as the fool's chapter, we, we thought was going to be so difficult, but really it's not, there's not too much to it. Obviously you don't want some Joe Schmo off the streets talking to people that has no training and no experience. But aside from a peer support class, if I'm not mistaken, that's really, all it takes, right? I mean, you you don't even have to have that. Yeah, I mean, it's um, just kind of getting the basic understanding. I mean, everyone's can hold a conversation. Sure. It's just getting the training under you enough to figure out how to guide that conversation and how to maneuver through that because there are certain questions you can ask and you're going to get certain responses back depending on Absolutely. how you ask those questions. Right. You that's, know? So, that's what I was yeah, going to say. Yeah, man, it's it's not hard. It's just taking someone who's willing to, to be a part of that. And I think that's a big thing people that are willing something else that we talked a lot to, to Nancy Westlink about was the secondary trauma. You know, you and I were talking a minute ago and you were saying that your phone is just goes crazy, which you're glad, you know, you want people to reach out, but that's got to take a toll on you and in turn your family and kids, man, how do you cope with stuff like that? Yeah. So that was one of the things I remember, uh, man, there was someone that I spoke with before we dove into all this and he's like, Like, I just want to be honest with you. He said, I want you to know that before you start this and before you dive into this, man, like this is a big undertaking. Uh, And he said, there are going to be times where you're sitting at dinner with your family or you're about to go to bed or you're 
at an event and someone's going to call your phone and you're going to have to walk away and you're going to have to answer. And, and no doubt, man, he was right. There have been so many times that my kids asked me, Daddy, why are you on the phone? Or we've been sitting at dinner and I've had to step away and miss the entire dinner or, you know, step out from an event that we're at to, to talk with someone. And, um, you know, there are times where it does start to take a toll on you. It takes a toll on the people around you, but it's, it's one of those things, man, my wife is so incredibly gracious and understanding and she gets, you know, why we do what we do and, you know, she supports it a hundred percent. So, uh, you know, that's a good part on that aspect of it. But then <clears throat> it comes back to the fact of, man, like there's trauma that I've been a part of that I have to deal with. And then I take everything else on <clears throat> that that we've, you know, been talking to other people about, you know. So the conversations that I've had uh, are countless at this point, you know, and the things that I have to hear from other people who have experienced that, you know, things that are just, you know, man, like you wouldn't wish on, on your own worst enemy, you right. know. I mean, like they're just things that people have seen and been a part of that are absolutely – man, just, uh, you know, unimaginable things that even for us as firefighters or first responders, like it's at the top of the, the peak of things that we might be a part of, you know, so they're experiencing those things and they're coming back to us and we're just trying to just help them see and understand that, man, if we can just talk this through, if we can just get this off of our chest and, and talking about it, you know, it makes it normal. Uh, you know, so many times we think that if we take what we are talking about or what we've experienced and we just shove it to the back of our mind or compartmentalize it, you know, and just try to tuck it away, then that's what's going to help us, you know, but really talking about something is what makes it more normal. You know, over time, the more you hear about something, the more normal it becomes kind of like this whole COVID-19 thing, right? Yeah, At the beginning, it was just like, uh, you know, what the heck is going on? But now it's like, oh, okay, you don't, you kind of, you don't even bat an eye at it. It. What's the and saying? So, in three days you build. It's like part of your life. After three days, you're, it's just in your routine. Yeah, it's normal. Yeah, I mean, and then after three weeks, I mean, it just is part of your routine, you know. So, uh, the more you speak about it openly, you know, and it's one of those things that if you talk about it out loud to someone, I mean, like that's the most healing thing that you could be a part of. And and so, I, you know, I take those same things into consideration, the things that I, I try to share with other people and give that advice on. I have to do the same thing for myself, you know. So Charlie and I will talk together, man. There are other people that I talk to and, uh, you know, everyone's got their different ways of coping and the things that they do. And, and so I just continue to to push myself to, to make sure that I have those healthy coping mechanisms um, because there are healthy and unhealthy ones, you know, I mean, by, mm -hmm. by all means we can, we can choose the unhealthy ones, but you know, typically if we choose those, then we find ourselves right back where we are within a few weeks or a few months and we haven't dealt with the issue at hand. So the healthy coping, coping mechanisms are what's so vital. And again, everyone is different. And so what that is for them is, is different than what it is for me or what it is for you. And we just try to, to find things that, bring people peace, you know, I mean, you know, one of those things for me is working out, dude, absolutely a huge part for me is just being able to, to take a moment out of my day to, to step into the gym, uh, or my garage or wherever I'm going that day and, and just working out, you know, and just getting that time by yourself. And I mean, because at that point it's just you, you know, it's just you against you and, and just trying to face the things that you're going through and, you know, to, to take that anxiety or frustration or anger out against that man. Like it's, it's, man, it's, it's, it's a great thing for me. And, and everybody's got their things that they love to do and be a part of, but that's, that's typically how I deal with my things is for me, I have to walk back through that call or I have to walk back through, you know, whatever it is that I'm facing, because the truth is, is we know that everything that has brought us to this point isn't always from the job. Um, you know, we can look at our family life and the personal stresses that we have that are that are playing um, into this, because I would say, man, eight to maybe nine times out of 10, the things that that we have seen and we have talked to people about is not just the job. Man, you know, there are times where, you know, people have run a string of bad calls 
and that's really what's impacting them. But I would say a majority of the time that it's their personal family life that is mixed in with their work life, and it's created the perfect storm and has brought them to the point that they are at. And so that's, um, you know, the things that we have to kind of figure out, you know, what has brought you to this point, what's going on, and and why are you here today, mm-hmm. you know, and um, it's a great conversation to have. It's very humbling at times. It, you know, allows people just to talk it out loud and hear it for the first time out loud because it's different when it's inside of your own mind. And we, you know, can play against ourselves. We can, you know, tell ourselves things that are not true. But once we finally get that out of our mind and, and, and allowed to someone else, a lot of times it doesn't sound as silly as what we think it sounds like in our head, you know, and I think that's the most helpful thing that, that we can do is just speak it out loud. I agree with all that, man. Um, you and I talked before we, we started and on a previous podcast, Molly and I had talked about some issues that I was having. And like I just told you, Blake, uh, the second I had set on a lot of really, really dark feelings and thoughts for a couple months and was terrified to talk about it because of the stigma and the fear of being looked down on or that I couldn't do the job or the job was too much for me. Uh, and the second I talked just to my wife, dude, it was the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders and no way was I fixed, but talking made everything just, I heard myself say it and I could rationalize a few things and I could really just process it. And mm-hmm. it made a world of difference to me. Something that, again, you and I talked about was the doctors and going to see a doctor, which is great. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't have anything negative to say about that, and I think you absolutely should. But an issue I had was the instant diagnosis of PTSD and the instant prescription for some sort of medication. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. If you need medication, by all means, take it. Me, personally, I'm a firm believer in trying all other options before that. Sure. Um, and I think that because the the mental health system in Georgia at least is so saturated and so overrun that that seems to be kind of a a first go to as an answer you know what i mean yeah um so what's next for next wrong man what do you what do you guys have going on yeah man uh, you know to kind of shed light on you know what you just were talking about that was one of the reasons that that we did start this organization is because no matter where you are in the United States or no matter what your department has as far as resources that they provide, what we have found is that there is going to be a handful of people or more who don't want to turn inward back to their department for one reason or another. And it's not because of what is being offered is invalid or it's not good enough, but man, like people have their reasonings as to why they do the things that they do. And, and there are so many different aspects and and reasons that go into that. Like I was saying, I mean, it could be the fact of, well, I don't want to turn inward to my department because I work with that person who serves on that team or, you know, I've had a run in with the person that's on that team. I don't like them. So that discredits the entire team. I'm not going to talk to them. And, and, you know, it just goes on from there, man. People's reasons as to why they don't want to reach inward is, is you know, their reason. And, and that's good. That's good enough for me, you know, and, and I want to be there to help them. And there are times where people want to utilize, you know, what their department offers. And then they want to, you know, go back and, and just talk to someone on, on the peer support level. And, and that's, you know, our home run for us is the, the peer support aspect of what we can offer, just the one-on-one conversation like you and I are having right now. I mean, that can be the most healing or the most helpful thing for people at times. And, you know, counseling is absolutely vital, like you said, for certain people. It's not what everybody needs. It's not what everybody wants. But typically what we see is once we start having conversations with people, it opens up their mindset that used to be somewhat closed off before that because they see that having a conversation and what that has done for them has, you know, brought them that relief, you know, just the weight of the world being lifted off of their chest or off their back, however they're feeling. And, and they see that, man, like this is good for me. Like I need to be a part of this more and, and depending on where we find people and what they're dealing with and, 
how far they've gotten into this before they've turned around and said, you know what, I need help right now. Because some people will wait till the absolute last minute where they are on the verge of wanting to take their life or they are at that moment and they call us. And we've had those conversations with people, you know, who have been at that moment of, I'm about to take my life. I need you to talk to me right now. And that's a very sobering conversation to have with someone and very humbling you know when you go back and you think about the conversation that you just had with that person and man it just it makes you thankful it makes you grateful for the things and the support that you have around you and and thankful for you know just the opportunity to to have a conversation with that person but um you know the resources out there are, man, there's so many different ones. You and I were talking about some of those earlier and, and, and some departments really do a bang up job with the things that they offer. But even with departments who offer some of the greatest resources around, we've seen people who have reached out to our organization because that's what they were comfortable with. And, and we knew that that was something that, that people were searching for uh, a, a way to, not have to reach inward and and have a chance of getting found out um, because there's still such a big stigma attached to mental health for some reason and uh, you know it's it's one of those things that for so long we were just like man up and take care of it you know do what you got to do to to get through uh, to the next shift or until you go home the next day and you know I, I mean I saw that with my dad and the things that uh, you know, the fire service presented back in, in that time. I mean, that's how it was. You didn't talk about it. You just buried your head or you looked down and you kept moving. And, you know, it's it's kind of what has brought us to, to where we are. You know, it's, it's one of those things that in the fire service were really um, reactive mm-hmm. as far as, you know, the things that we do. And some things we have to be. I mean, that's that's the the, the glorious part of the fire service. We, we learned from the calls that we've run, the mistakes that we've made, or, you know, the things that we've been a part of to help us better ourselves. But, uh, unfortunately in this one, man, we've been the same, you know, we've been reactive and, and, and that's kind of where, you know, it brings us to, especially in some departments that don't have anything yet at all to offer to their people. Um, you know, it doesn't hit them until something happens within their department that makes them have to think about that. And and some people think that it's not going to happen to them that, you know, man, we take good care of our people, but no matter what you have, no matter what resources you have, and this isn't a knock on any organization, man, there's always going to be a better fit out there for somebody else. And, and we know that we're, we're, um, the, the station posters and the cards that we send out, we're not the only resource that we, we talk to people about. There are other resources that we provide on our station posters that, you know, if, if we don't answer or if we don't help them, then, you know, maybe one of these other organizations will be able to help them better because, I mean, that's just how it is. It's, you know, it's kind of a, you know, do you want to go to Walmart or do you want to go to Target kind of thing? I mean, that's that's the best way I can put it, I guess, <laughs> is, you know, there's going to be things that, you know, people like, you know, one way or the other, and, and that's what helps them. But, um, you know, as a whole, we just knew that and, and have seen conversations where it's ended up, you know, someone in my department found out and they weren't supposed to, you know, because our peer support team is completely anonymous, but it got back to my crew. And now, like, I'm catching feedback from that, and I'm catching the raft of my crew because they found out. Which is a shame, man. It shouldn't be that way. Right. And so because they reached inward, that was the situation that they found themselves in, and now they're having to reach back out and go through it all over again. You're talking about the things that they've been through and trying to just get peace of mind, you know. And, And so that's what we wanted to be there for is to give people you know, no matter where they are, no matter what day of the week it is, if they're on shift or not, that they had a number that they could reach out to and, and someone's going to get back to them that understands the job and lives the lifestyle just like they do. So, uh, you know, that's kind of where we are currently. And, and really, man, I don't see anything changing as far as the future goes, as far as, um, you know, the way that we have developed our organization, man, other than just trying to get in front of people more who've been around for three years and we just want to continue to to make an impact and help change people's lives the only thing that we can do from here is just continue to grow our organization and add you know um more detail to the things that we do add more people to our peer support team and 
uh, you know, things like that. But I really think that we try to keep it as simple as possible with the three yeah, pillars that we absolutely. offer. Absolutely. What are those three pillars? And the, again, those three pillars are peer support, just the one on one conversation that you have with another firefighter or first responder. It's just like you, you, you and I sitting right here. Um, but again, it's someone who gets the job, who understands it and lives it just like you do. And, and that was the most important feature of what we have to offer um, when it comes back down to it. Because the truth is, is we could pay, you know, someone want to be at the phone and answer that immediately when someone calls in or they text in and, and we didn't want to do that you know hopefully we we have a little bit of grace from the people who are, are you know calling to to talk with someone and we try to put that you know on automated response like if someone calls our number and it'll send back a text message hey you know there's a chance that our peer support team whoever's you know going to be talking with you is running a call right now or they're talking with another first responder um, you know but we just wanted to offer something that was real and not just you know someone who's taken a class but someone who lives a job who understands who understands it and has had their own experiences you know because no matter who you talk to on our team man we've all had our own experiences we've all had things that we've overcome whether that's addiction to alcohol or you know traumatic calls that we've been a part of that have you know wrecked our life or we've lost people in the line of duty or whatever it may be man like we have so many different things across the board we have wildland firefighters we have EMTs and paramedics you know we have people who have been a part of it um, people who have been in rehab you know I mean no matter what what way you look at it man like we've had someone who's likely been there and that's what we have to offer uh you know so i think that's huge uh so peer support is is our home run i think and what we have to offer again it doesn't fix everything uh and it's not just it's not always just a one conversation and out uh sometimes there is that and we've had those man we've had a conversation with someone uh you know either via phone or text conversation and we don't hear back from them after one conversation which is great man like that's my hope is I would love to have just one conversation with everyone and everything is, you know, good to go and they're back at it. But we also know that that's not the case. And there are people that we've walked with for four weeks. There are people that we've walked with for five months. You know, it just depends on what they need and we continue to follow up with them based on what they're facing. Uh, so peer support and then the the financial assistance for licensed counseling and the locating counselors in your area. You know, we, we know that's a big deal because everyone doesn't know who to reach out to, who they can trust or to, you know, where, where do I begin by trying to find a counselor that is going to be the right fit for me? So we will do that for them. We, we try to do all the legwork and make sure that they have a couple of options. And, you know, we, we find that to, to be really helpful for people. And, you know, just last week I was able to connect someone with a, a counselor that we've used before and, and have had glowing reviews about, man, anytime that I can utilize the same counselor over again is a win for us because I know, you know, based off of another firefighter or first responder that has utilized that counselor, that it was successful, you know, so we continue to build relationships in that way. Uh, so that's great to be able to point people back to the same person and know that you can trust the, the person that you're sending them to. Um, but yeah, you know, we'll find the counselor in their area. And then again, we will help pay for the first cycle of sessions for, for that, that person, you know, so if their insurance can't, can't cover it or, you know, they, they can't pay for it out of pocket. We, we don't want that to be a worry, but we just want you to get a butt in a chair that's in front of that counselor and say, Hey, I'm, I'm here for help, you know, and, and that's important. And then lastly, again, is we donate back to families who have, who have lost their firefighter or first responder to suicide. Um, and that's hard, man. It is hard writing that letter It's hard signing that letter and yeah, sending a it. care package to that family. Um, and stupidly enough, man, I don't know if it's stupid or not. Typically what I find myself doing is I find social media and I find that person or I find their spouse and I just, man, like it breaks my heart. You know, it, it stings to, to have to write that letter and to see, uh, you know, I, I guess, you know, social media is a disguise and maybe it just, it always looks happy, but man, like you see this family who, who seems so loving and caring and, 
man, like you just wish that, that there's just one conversation that you could have had with a man. And, and unfortunately we don't always get that conversation, you know, and, and, uh, you know, I try not to dwell on that fact because I know that we can't save everyone, that we, we can only save the people who reach out to us and, and, and are ready to get that help. And, and we can't force everyone to do that. But if I could say anything is one conversation, just, just allow someone, it doesn't have to be us. It doesn't have to be next rung. It, it could be absolutely anyone, you know, and, one of the things that, that I, you know, taught for the class that, that we did for the 575 fools is that it starts at the station level. You know, it, it starts with you as a person, no matter what your rank is or years of service or experience, it starts with you and having those conversations in your firehouse. If we can make that, you know, a priority, I think this would change so much, but it's going to take us as people being willing to say, Hey man, I know that was a crappy call. You know, if we ran a crappy call and saying, if you need to talk about it, just let me know, you know, and asking the question of, you know, how are you, but not like, Hey man, how are you? But like really asking the question of what's going on in life right now? You know, tell me, you know, how's home life? You know, I know we ran that call a few weeks ago. You know, you're, you're not the only one thinking about it. If you want to talk about it, you know, this is a, this is a time for us to do that. I just want you to know that, I mean, you have someone who cares about you, you know, and is going to be here to support you and, and really dive into that of making that indention into their mind of someone cares about you and they're willing to listen and they understand it from your perspective and they care about your family. They care about your, your marriage and, and all these things that you have going on in life. Um, you know, we claim to be this family, but so many times it's a facade that we put on, mm-hmm, I guess, mm-hmm. and we don't really ask the detailed questions that we should ask. And, and I think that's what's setting us back. I think a lot of the reason that people, you know, you, after the class, you and I talked a lot about the, hey man, are you okay question. And so many times you ask that hoping that their answer is, yeah, I'm good. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's when it's, it's when, easier that way. Absolutely. It's the fear of asking the question and really getting a true response. Yeah. You know, um, and it's not easy to hear that stuff, man, because it's awkward. You yeah. know, I mean, it, not everybody has the experience or the knowledge or the ear to just sit and hear that stuff and know how to respond. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just the whole mentality of like, hey man, how are you? It's like, oh, I'm just living the dream. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've said oh, that, dude. you know, and there's a, a war field that's going on in my yes. mind, you know? It's just like, I could tell you, but I don't know if you want to exactly. you know, sit if down. If you then. only freaking knew what was yeah, going on in my exactly. head right now. And, and that's the thing, man. I'm glad you said that, dude. Everybody, everybody goes through this. Yeah. You're not immune to it. It's going to happen. Absolutely. So many good points were made, dude. Um, so talk to us about donating because I know what you guys do isn't free. It, 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 right. I'm sure it comes with a price. Yeah. And to me, this is something that people just need to get behind. Mm-hmm. It is. It's, it's, it's a no brainer. Yeah. Um, to help people that help others and sacrifice time and, and life and limb and, uh, all that stuff, man, it, it's a no brainer, dude. So tell us how people can donate. Yeah. So if you go to our website, it's nextrung.org, N E X T R U N G dot O R G. There are tabs at the top and it's called the Change Lives Campaign. And there's a link down at the bottom that allows you to click on that and you can go to partner with us and it's through a company called Kindful. Really easy, man. It's the best setup. It took us about three years to really find a a platform that's, you know, user friendly. But we finally found it. Um, Man, it, it allows you to to sign up and it reminds you it, it, it's, it's, it's great, man. I, I can't say enough great things about just the platform, but it's called the change lives campaign. It starts at $3 a month and you know, that doesn't sound like much, but uh, you know, if, if I could look at our little over 13,000 followers that we have on Instagram, which isn't much, but if every one of those people gave $3 a month, dude, we would never have a worry in the world as far as providing the the help to people that, that come to us and, and ask for it. But $3 a month really does and can make a huge difference, which is less than a cup of coffee. You know, yeah, if absolutely. we look at it, yep. I mean, you can go to, you know, your local coffee shop or wherever you, you like to get coffee from and, 
spend more than that on, on a cup of coffee or a drink or whatever it may be. So we wanted it to be something that wasn't a burden for people to give back, you know, but $3 a month really is, is where it starts. And then it goes on upward from there. And we have people throughout that, you know, some people give $3, some people give a hundred dollars, you know, um, but we still, we're not where we need to be as far as, as partners, man, we, we couldn't have enough. Um, because they're, as we are here longer, obviously, and, and grow as an organization, more people continue to reach out and everything that is donated goes into its own account. And so that, that goes to provide more training for us and peer support that goes to provide the donations that we give to families. And that goes back to providing, you know, the financial assistance for licensed counseling. Uh, and then along with that, it helps us go to different organizations or different conferences to tell people about what we do and to spread the word and the mission that we have. So that's exactly where that money goes. It goes nowhere else. Um, we have apparel and things that we sell as well. Some sick apparel, I might add. Uh, you know, and, and, one of the things that, that we campaigned the idea of was Green Monday to bring more attention to the mental health aspect of the job for first responders. So every, <clears throat> excuse me, every Monday we wear green and, uh, you know, that's one of the ways that we do that. But we have all sorts of apparel on there, you know, and that just kind of, man, really, we have two separate accounts. But what I tell people is if we had to drain every last penny that we had on the next person that came in and asked us for help, that's exactly what we do. Um, there's not one person who's more important than the other. It just depends on who comes to us next and what they need. Uh, because we know that, you know, hopefully there's more money coming in. And we just we want to help people, you know, and we don't want to filter that, you know, because I, <laughs> There are places out there, man, that, well, you know, we got to spread our money out. You know, we, we got to help all these other people. It, it, we're not that way, dude. We help the next person who comes in. Um, and, and I'm not saying that to, to, like, that's a proud thing. But we just, man, we want to help whoever it is that's coming to us at that moment. And, you know, the way Charlie and I see it is if we could change one life, you know, that was a win for us. And we were able to do that, um, you know, the first year that we were open. And, you know, from here on out, man, everything is just a plus from that Absolutely. moment moment forward, you know, to, to be able to help whoever it is that, that comes to us and, you know, trust us with their story. And, and we thank people for that all the time. You know, I just had a conversation yesterday with a guy that I've been talking with and, man, we're thankful, you know, it's, it's not them being thankful because they are, and, and they're overly, you know, um, thankful for us when we help them. But dude, I'm just as thankful, you know, for the opportunity to talk with them and just to speak with them. And it's just as therapeutic for me as it hopefully is for them. And we just, you know, we all want to see that everyone that serves with this, we have a, a great board of directors. Uh, we have a, a licensed counselor that serves on our board, um, but everything that we do, you know, if, if you go to the Change Lives campaign, you can sign up there. Again, it, it depends on what you are comfortable giving. We, you know, don't require, you know, anything more than, than $3. And everyone that partners with us, we end up, you know, commemorating our partnership with the challenge coin that we send to them. That's the only way that you can actually get one of our challenge coins. Um, I started selling them at the beginning when we bought them, you know, in about a month or so into that, I was like, man, I want there to be purpose and reasoning behind, you know, someone having our challenge coin. And man, there are people that partner with us and have given those to people who have been in a tough moment and will actually send them another coin because they, they gave that to someone to help them through whatever it is that they're going through. But yeah, man, the, the change lives campaign is, is where it's at. And then we also do different events throughout the year. So if there's anyone that ever wants to host an event that you know, raises funds for us, man, we're dude always humbled by that. I mean, I can't tell you enough, uh, uh you know, how humbled we are by someone wanting to support our organization. And we're thankful for the people that do that. And, and we've had a few of those and, Man, there are people who donate to us yearly at a certain amount. Uh, there is a, a boxing event that we are doing yearly now, which is out in California in Pasadena. Um, and and so, you know, that's coming up again in, in September, I believe. And, uh, dude, we're, we're thankful for stuff like that because those are 
those are the the events that that we count on along with people giving back and people like dude what is three dollars really going to do and i can't stress enough the fact of you know three three dollars really does equal to change life absolutely uh yeah so that's that's where it's at it's on our website but again everything is there information about us what we do and um you know just the the things that we continue to to be a part of and um it's great man I, i couldn't fathom or imagine you know that we would be where we are at this moment you know uh, it's one of those things when you start something like this you hope that you're going to be able to make a difference yep. and you never really dream of the fact that you will make a difference and um man it's it's, it's great I, I couldn't do it without charlie and, and our board and you know the people who continue to support us like yourself and allow us opportunities like this to share about who we are and the things that we do the pleasure's all ours dude um it, like I said, to donate and to be a part of and to support an organization like y'all's is a no-brainer. Um, to get behind first responders and put y'all's selves out there the way that you have, and to take on the secondary trauma and time away from families that, you know, not not many people would do that. So thank you guys for what you yeah, do. Yeah, man, um, absolutely. It takes a special person and people to, to do that. So let's talk about op- open bail, dude. Tell, tell me about, tell me about that. Yeah. So, uh, I guess, uh, I have several pokers in the fire, yeah. man. I'm, man I'm a busy person. Yeah. Uh, you know, but outside of next strong, which is a huge passion, obviously we just talked a good while on that, man. I love the fire service and everything that it entails, you know, the training, going to fires, you know, running calls and being a part of that. Um, and so myself and a, a good friend of mine, man, we've gotten to know each other the past few years. His name is Drew McConnell. He runs a page called Fire Reviews and has done several different reviews over uh, different products over the years. Anyway, man, I, I was after him for about two years or so. I was like, hey, man, he's like, you want to start something? And I would just send something silly his way. I was like, hey, man, do you want to do maybe we should make toothpicks for firefighters or something like that? You know, just being silly and graciously he'd be like uh man not you know not right now you know he turned me down in in a nice way and i finally asked him man back in it was almost this time last year i was like hey man you know every few months i'd send something to him a text message or, or call him i was like hey man you ready to start something else and he's like yeah i am man you know he's like what, what do you want to do and it took us a few months to kind of come up with, you know, what we wanted to name ourselves and what our, you know, goal was in that. But Open Bell is, you know, um, just a mentality along with a tactic. Obviously, you know, you open the bell on a nozzle, no matter what kind of nozzle you're, you're toting when you go into a fire uh, or pulling off of your rig. You know, whether it's a smooth bore or it's a fog or whatever, everyone, everyone's department has got their the nozzle that they love um, for some reason or another. But uh, if you ask me, uh, the smooth bore is the way to go. I knew you were going to say that. Uh, you know, there's, some, there's science behind it, man. You I know, prefer the 15 drop set. You know, it. <laughs> it's a little, little action on the, the bags That's there, right. squirting some saline. That's right. some high pressure know. there. That's it. Uh, no, but uh, there is use for nozzles on on of every type at some point. But um, anyway, open bell is more of a mentality and mindset of, I mean, if you look at the force of the water that comes from a nozzle when you open the bell, man, it just punches whatever is in front of it in the for face. Sure. And it's a force to be reckoned with. And we just feel like if we have that mentality, you know, as we maneuver through our career in the fire service, that if we are forced to be reckoned with, man, there's nothing that's going to stand in our way that we cannot accomplish if we just put our mind to it. And so that's kind of the idea behind, you know, the reasoning of the name. It also, it's, it's, it's a tactic, like we said, and we want to to bring and present a class, you know, uh, to be able to train people on. Um, and, and we are in the middle of setting that up very cautiously and we want it to to be on point when we present it so hopefully in the next few months uh as drew and i continue to develop that class it's going to be a class that isn't taught you know it's touched on from time to time but it's not you know class specifically on what to look for when you open that bell 
Uh, so that's kind of what we're doing, man. We we wanted to create a, a brand as well with it, and I'm looking at the logo, dude. It looks uh, you sick. Know, a, a clothes, it looks good. Uh, really, just a, apparel that doesn't scream firefighter. While we have some of that stuff, like the shirt I'm wearing, you know, it's, it's got nozzles on it, things like that. We also want to create something that people can wear every single day and it not scream I'm a firefighter. Right, you right. know, because while we love it, we also want to wear clothes a lot of times that that maybe don't you know, scream that. And, uh, so that's kind of our goal with that man to teach and to, you know, give back and, and show people our love for the fire service. And, uh, you know, that was my idea anyway, uh, as far as, you know, why I wanted to start something different, you know, because again, next strong is so important and I never want to take away from that by posting anything else on that page or, you know, ranting on something that is dealing with training or, sure. you know, the fire service in a different way. So open bill allows me to have that creativity as far as the apparel that we're going to be doing. And then also, I mean, I love teaching people. Uh, it's same, just a, a big here, passion of mine and, and I want to give back in that way and share that. So that's, you know, what we plan on doing. So hopefully, you know, over the, the next several months, especially after this whole, social distancing thing uh ends and we, we are not six to, feet away by we're the not way. we're not it's okay um but man yeah that's our, our goal is to be able to teach a class and to maybe provide lectures in the future and really though anything that i do man next rung is is always going to be a part of if sure. i can have the, the opportunity to share about that man like this is just another way so open bell is just another avenue for me to talk with people to teach people and to hear more about who they are and then to just share my love for the fire service as a whole and and teach a fun class you know so hopefully you know we just get to continue to do that man and have fun with it and get to meet people all over the united states that's awesome dude what you were doing and, and what you just said about just hearing people's story and getting to know people and networking and loving the fire service. That's what this podcast is about. Yeah. Not only that, it's not just fire service. Molly and I talked a lot about how we wanted to run this and the platform we wanted to take. And although it's going to be very fire service related and mm -hmm. that's going to be the main focus, Molly is a very, very, very smart business person. Yeah. Way smarter than me. There's a lot that goes into it, man. Uh, a lot of things that people don't think, you know, and it's just, the that's more of the headache than anything. Absolutely, you know? man. When we started the 575 Fools, I was the stereotypical person that saw the start and the finish line. Yeah. I did not see all the stuff that went into it. I'm, I'm still that way, dude. I'm not a, I'm a big picture person. Me too. I'm not detail oriented. I'm a dreamer dog. I don't, I don't oh, see absolutely. that great in the middle. But, yeah. uh, Seriously, man, what you guys are doing is awesome. Please tell everybody how they can find you, how they can utilize your services, and just touch on that stuff, and then we'll yeah, get you absolutely. out of here. Yeah, uh, absolutely. As far as Next Rung goes, uh, nextrung.org, N-E-X-T-R-U-N-G.org. That's our website. We are on Instagram and Facebook, next underscore rung, because someone took next rung that doesn't use that name. I try to get it. It doesn't work. Uh, that's just a little rant there, but next <laughs> underscore rung. Uh, if you are on Facebook, is at next rung fire. And our number is one eight three three six nine eight seven eight six four. And you can text the word support. Text the word support over to us, and we will get someone in touch with you. And they will either call you if you want a conversation or they will just continue to text with you. Uh, but that helps us uh, allow a moment for us to line someone up with you. So there are people who call our number off, you know, right away. And whoever answers the phone answers the phone. And it could be, you know, anyone that serves on our team. But typically a text message is way more helpful for us because it allows us to get someone lined up who isn't speaking with someone already or, you know, has a moment to talk with, with that person and isn't, you know, running a call or talking with someone else. So one eight three three six nine eight seven eight six four. text the word support, or you can actually text the word info if you want to learn more about our organization and Charlie or myself will get back to you and provide you with any of the, the details and information that you need. Um, if you need to, to email us, it's info at nextrung.org, or you can email myself, it's blake at nextrung.org, or charlie at nextrung.org. So any of those will go back to myself or Charlie. Uh, both of us have the info one, and then we have our individual emails as well. And then open bell. Uh, we have uh, Instagram and Facebook is just at open bell, so O-P-E-N-B-A-L-E. 
and we have a website as well you can just click the link there um, but it's through Shopify so we haven't gotten fancy yet but open bill is, is coming openbill.com actually it's going to be open hyphen bill.com because open Someone's bill is already taken i don't know there's all these ideas that we have but yeah man so no matter what uh you guys are looking for if you um you know want to talk with someone or you want some training or whatever it may be some sick apparel uh yeah some some great apparel i love hats i love shirts so that's you know what we do man we have all sorts of stuff so some great stuff coming you know just keep up with us and and please man you know if you feel inclined uh as far as next run goes man we'd love to have your partnership financially uh, because it does help us change so many lives and, and you know that was just one of the testimonials that he read at the very beginning of so many you know there, there's countless of them now and man it's just it's a great thing to be a part of it's it's humbling it's um man i, I couldn't imagine doing anything different though you know and, and being where we are so i'm definitely blessed to, to be here and thankful for all those who support us so thank you for having us on man and, and allowing me to be here no dude thank you man i know i know your time is valuable and i know you're a busy guy but thank you very much thank you guys for listening i have to do the cheesy tell you guys to subscribe so please give us a like give us a share subscribe mental health month is next month it is support it we have a big raffle coming up, by the way. So we, we do a raffle that. every year. Um, you know, radio straps, all sorts of things, man, that, that people are going to be donating. Coffee, uh, supplements as far as like vitamins and everything that we get is first responder based, man. So uh, there's a lot of people who plug in it and give to that. So it's going to be pretty sick, man. I'm looking forward awesome. to it. I didn't know y'all yeah. did that, but I'll, yeah. I'll for sure get on that train. We try to get some some big prizes you know some axes and some different things like that you know that people are gonna where's love. that gonna go down at it's gonna be on our instagram okay. so a lot of what we do is instagram based because we have more followers there um so just check out our instagram but we'll put the link in our bio where you can go and you um just get raffle tickets so typically you know it's a certain amount per raffle ticket and you can enter as many times as you want and this year there's going to be several winners as opposed to just one so sure. more chances to win awesome well thank you again blake thank you listeners subscribe peace out